What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today we've got an unbelievably fun to play build to share with you all and this one is enhanced with our favourite easy to use mods. This is the Berserker. The Berserker is the living embodiment of power fantasy. He rips the heads off mighty beasts, he stampedes through hordes of helpless foes and he crushes dark wizards between his massive hands like twigs. And before he's even had time to wash the blood of the slain from his furs, he's in bed with the rescued damsel in distress working on that well-rested bonus. This orc is a born warrior, and where a severe wound would deter most fighters, the Berserker is invigorated. He thrives on the thrill of combat and relishes in pain, using it to fuel his attacks. In light bare-chested barbarian armor, he moves with speed and grace, putting all his strength behind catastrophically powerful battle axe blows. All the while, his mastery of the thumb turns his bellows of animalistic rage into weapons, and he even has the ability to merge shouts for deadly combinations. If you want to take Skyrim by storm, crushing your opponents and inspiring loyalty and envy in everyone you meet, this is the perfect build for you. His towering presence gives him whatever he wants in negotiations and in combat he's in his element. So much so that even the World Eater himself will begin to reconsider who he messes with. But I won't keep you hanging any longer. Let's talk about all you need to get this build up and running. We'll be using a total of five mods, the first of which is called Alternate Start. This one is helpful for role-playing, allowing you to bypass the traditional Skyrim prologue. The second is called Imperious Races of Skyrim, and this will overhaul the racial traits of each race. Similarly, Andromeda Standing Stones of Skyrim gives a diverse new array of Standing Stone powers in place of the vanilla ones. Immersive Armors is the fourth mod, and this is for a range of new aesthetic options. And last but not least, we have the Ordinator Perk Overhaul, which completely reinvents the perk tree system for Skyrim, allowing us to create a truly unique play style that does justice to the Berserker's badassery. But with that said, we can get right into the build. If you're looking for a specific section of this build, simply head to the description where we have placed timestamps for your convenience. First, let's talk about race, standing stone, and stats. The Berserker's an orc. And with the Imperious Races of Skyrim mod, you will have the following stats and abilities. You begin with a base health of 105, 80 for Magicka, which we don't use, 115 Stamina, 1% Health Regen per second, 2.75% when it comes to Magicka, and 5.5% for Stamina Regen, and a carry weight of 350. You'll also have four unique abilities, one of which must be unlocked. Bloodlust allows you to move faster and regenerate quicker at the start of combat, and this effect decays over time. Shockwave gives you the chance to jump once per battle to cause an earthquake. Strength of Steel makes your weapons and armor stronger, but your enchantments weaker. Luckily, we aren't enchanting. And finally, after staggering 150 enemies with Shockwave, you unlock Berserk. With this, your weapons and spells are improved for a short time, and it can be used once a day or activated randomly in combat. The Berserker will use the Lord Stone, which grants three abilities due to our mod choice, one of which is unlockable. The first is Crown of Autumn and this prevents stamina regenerating in combat in exchange for 20% more power attack damage and stagger. Old Stone allows you to power attack when your stamina is depleted, dealing 30% less damage and stagger as a penalty. And finally, the unlockable ability is Kneel or Be Knelt. With this, you can throw targets to the ground once per day, dealing 15 magic damage and absorbing that much stamina for 10 seconds. As you can see, this build will be power attacking all the time, doing more power attack damage because of the stone, and while you'll do less power attack damage if you run out of stamina, which won't be too often, you can still at least do those power attacks. Now the Berserker's stat spread will be 50% health to keep him alive, and 50% stamina for plenty of power attacking. High stamina investment is well worth it, as power attacking is incredibly powerful thanks to your perp choices and the Lordstone. Also, an overly heavy health investment isn't crucial, as you will actually be rewarded with more damage output when your health depletes to certain levels levels in combat. Now for the backstory. The Berserker was born in the northwestern expanses of the Alakir Desert in the heart of Hammerfell. Some say the sands of the Alakir can rip a man's skin from his bones if he isn't protected by the finest leathers. As far as this orc was concerned, the sandstorms weeded out the weak, and he left his torso exposed to the elements. While other mortals guarded their dead weight, the Berserker's weakness was eroded by a billion grains of the Alakir. The son of the village blacksmith, the Berserker matured quickly. By the age of 15, 
seen, he was a respected warrior, rivaling some of the older grizzled men in his village. No doubt his orc blood gave him a genetic advantage, even if these red guards were artists with scimitars in their hands. The giant orc understood modesty and practicality, wearing light armor over his groin and legs, but other than that, he wanted to feel the freedom of a natural state, the scraping wind on his chest, and the warm wet blood of his enemies on his skin. Steel armor was an unnatural shell, and while it offered physical protection, it defied the very biology of humanoids and left the fighters hindered and lethargic in their movements. Upon reaching adulthood, the berserker was overcome by a sense of wonderlust. He could protect his village from any intruder, but he was a born hunter, and not the kind of predator who waited patiently for its prey. Guided by superstitions and folk tales, he set out in search of what thinking men would call myths. He wanted to slay giant scorpions who owned the center of the desert like chitinous kings. He set out in pursuit of scheming wizards in star-decorated robes and pointed hats. They were said to be easy to find if you were mad enough to go looking. They lived in tall spindly towers, surveilling the surrounding desert through their crystal balls. But there was one particular wizard who intrigued the berserker, a dark elf sorcerer. His tower was said to be so tall that his balcony loomed over the clouds, and on a clear day you could see all the way to the Iliac Bay. But what the berserker cared more about was his prize. In a cage suspended high above the sands, a beautiful Alakir princess was held captive, like a colorful bird meant to live free. The berserker had known his fair share of women, including orcs and elves, and even some beasts, but no prize whet his appetite like this damsel. And so he rode across the desert, pushing on through sweltering days and teeth chattering nights. He only stopped to water his steed and to fuel up on jerkied meats. And then one afternoon, when the heat of the day was dwindling and the sky was painted the hue of molten gold, he saw the tower on the horizon. Through the air heating and shimmering off of the sand, it looked like a mirage, a hallucination tricking his mind. But the berserker felt no fatigue, only a powerful force of nature driving him to feats no mortal could match. He rode hard until the tower loomed right over his head, casting a shadow a league to the east. He arched his neck to gaze up at the structure. Some walls jutted out, while others receded inwards. Such sporadic dimensions could not possibly stand without some sorcery reinforcing it. The black stones shone, showing no wear from the elements, and just as the wives' tales had claimed, the tower disappeared into an unnatural fog, clinging to the high walls as if drawn by the magic. The berserker felt a wave of anticipation wash over him. It invigorated his muscles and his fingers twitched, longing to grasp his battle axe like a weaning child reaching for its mother. With a roar, he kicked open the heavy wooden doors and stormed the tower. Unsuspecting skeletons turned with audible creaks to look at the new intruder. The berserker knew that if his foes had skin on their bones, it would surely be crawling from the intimidating sight before them. His laugh was as deep as forge bellows when the rage filled his veins, and with his first swing of the battle axe, a shower of bones drummed against the stone floor. He took down a half dozen in one sweep, and a handful more on the back swing. Wing. Only one escaped the axe, and this one he grabbed by the skull with a free hand and lifted effortlessly off the ground. In a high arc, he swung the skeleton over his head, the thing's feet scraping the ceiling in the process, and then he slammed it down into the floor, shattering it into a thousand fragments. Ahead, the narrow staircase wound up to the right, and without hesitation, he leapt up the steps three at a time. The undead beings and skeletons that tried to prevent his ascent must have thought they had the upper hand. Poor souls. After all, there was no way he could effectively use a battle axe in such narrow confines. The only thing is, the berserker didn't need a weapon. He was a weapon. He simply lowered his shoulder, battering through waves of foes like an angered bull. When he reached the top of the tower, high above the world below, the cool breeze of dusk on his bare chest restored his vitality. With a great push, the doors to the wizard's chamber slammed open. In the center of the room, a giant iron cauldron bubbled as some intoxicating concoction brewed on the fire. Beyond that, on a pedestal, the wizard stared into his crystal ball, eyes glazed and entranced by his visions. The Dark Elf's eyes were blood red, his skin was worn like old leather, and his wispy beard fell to his knees. He raised his head with a grin to look at the berserker. A gangly, long-nailed hand emerged from the sleeve of his robe, and a bolt of concentrated lightning lunged at the berserker, cutting turbulently through the air. The large orc stepped aside, missing the blow by a hair, but feeling the powerful charge sear his bare skin. The berserker sprung at the wizard. With a snap of his fingers, the wizard's skin flashed, and his flesh was as sturdy as a great oak. The berserker laughed. His axe could chop through oak. 
Soon the sun had disappeared, and the only light in the tower was emanating from the crystal ball. The white refracted light made it look as though they were underwater. The wizard used spells to take the strength from the berserker's heavy blows, and his skin was blackened from shock spells. Beneath the glow of the ball, the wizard's shockwave caused the berserker to lose grip of his battle axe. He was exposed. As the wizard brought his hands together, a tempest coalesced, ready to kill the exposed orc. Before the spell could be unleashed, the berserker thrust his hand upwards, gripping the crystal and ripping it from its plinth. With a ferocious cry, he brought the heavy spear down and smashed it over the wizard's skull. The bone caved under the might of the blow, and the wizard fell to the floor, his favorite tool used as a device to kill him. Victorious, the berserker opened the balcony door and found the beautiful red guard woman, scantily clad and awaiting rescue. He pried the bars open with his hands and lifted her free. At the base of the tower, the berserker pulled a thick wool blanket from the back of his horse, and the two embraced under the starry sky. This was one of many adventures for the berserker. His wanderlust took him far beyond the sands of the Alakir, and when rumors of dragons emerged from Skyrim, he wasted no time before embarking on his new journey. We'll join the Berserker in Skyrim thanks to the alternate start mod, when he is camping in the woods, not far from the location of Alduin the World Eater. Role playing the Berserker is very simple. He's in search of the ultimate challenge. He's ambitious, hungry to display his power, and he's going to indulge in all of the pleasures of Tamriel, taking no shit from anyone in the process. Crossing the Berserker is a death sentence, and he is so intimidating that he inspires loyalty in anyone he meets. Men want to fight alongside him, and women want to be in his bed. And by women, I mean humans, exotic beast folk, and elves alike. He's definitely not bad looking for an orc, and as an orc who fights with savage brutality, many compare him to Malakath. And while he does not worship anyone, he does follow what he believes is Malakath's path. He is an outcast, a vagrant, and he expects to be perceived as a barbarian by the masses. He acts in a way that he thinks would make Malakath proud, though there is a small whisper in his mind that tells him he cannot kneel for anyone he believes he could best in combat, and that includes a Daedric Prince. Opting to avoid bulky armor, the Berserker will be all about violence, speed, and momentum, overwhelming his foes with ease. Think Conan the Barbarian when playing this build. He will be drawn to Malakath's quest, helping the cursed tribe and finding the Prince's shrine, but his main goal will be to follow the main story, proving to himself and to the world that he is stronger than any dragon, regardless of their age and their dramatic titles. If the World Eater tried to eat the Berserker, he would carve his way free through flesh and bone, erupting from the creature's distended belly like a newborn. Of course, this will bleed into the Dragonborn DLC, where he can prove his might against Mirak. Siding with the Dawnguard in the Dawnguard DLC fits his character too, as slaying great evils like an ancient vampire clan is exactly what he's all about. The Companions Guild is a great fit for the Berserker, but we'll leave the decision of where we'll form up to you. Assassins and Thieves are cowards in the Berserker's eyes, they hide in the shadows, and they don't have the honor to fight fairly, so he will happily kill the Dark Brotherhood if you so choose, ridding Skyrim of another malevolent force. With the Berserker's backstory, role-playing, and faction choices in mind, let's move on to his skill shouts, perks, and his overall playstyle. So the main skills for this build will be two-handed light armor, smithing, and speech. Even though he won't be using any spells, he will implement shouts into his playstyle a lot. So in your travels, look out for Dragon Aspect, Elemental Fury, which is the bread and butter of this build, Unrelenting Force, Cyclone, and Whirlwind Sprint. The Berserker strikes with such great agility that he whips up a tempest. Like a dragon beating its wings, he commands the air, and using the thorn, he can controls the wind. There are also two powers worth mentioning here, and those are the Black Book powers from Hermaeus Mora's Realm of Apocrypha. You'll want to get your hands on the Dragonborn Force power from the book Epistolary Acumen. This makes your unrelenting Force shout do more damage, and it may even disintegrate enemies. The other Black Book power to get from Filament and Filigree is Secret of Strength, which will remove all stamina cost from your power attacks for 30 seconds. Furthermore, when you focus on a word of power with Parthenax, you should choose Fuss. This will give you the effect called Force Without Effort. This grants the Berserker a 25% increase in stability against staggering and a 25% chance of opponents being staggered. But with all of that said, let's move on to his perks. Now while there's only four skills in play here, the Ordinator Perk Overhaul gives us a ton of options for making a unique playstyle. So first up, we've got Two-Handed, and there's not too much to say about this one. The Berserker earns his name, and when he puts his weight behind the swing of his battle axe, nothing short of divine intervention can save you. And even then, it's 
it's not a guarantee. From the two-handed skill tree, take two-handed mastery, two out of two. Trained fighter, death or glory, wolfkin, bleed like a dog, three out of three. Rive, two out of two. Execute, decimate, bisect, ram's head, slayer of a thousand suns, ferocious strength, bear hide massacre, enter the arena, and voice of rage and ruin. Death or glory is the perk which really rewards you for aggressive play, as your two-handed power attacks will be twice as powerful when you are below half health. Additionally, the damage bonus increases as your health decreases, so let your pain turn to power. The tree beginning with Bleed Like a Dog will improve your efficiency with the battle axe. Bear Hide will also reward your heavy attacks, decreasing the amount of damage you take by half when you are winding up a two-handed power attack. With Massacre, your attack speed has a 10% chance to increase to 175% for 3 seconds, and thanks to Enter the Arena, this effect will automatically activate when you make your first two-handed attack in combat. Lastly, with Voice of Rage and Ruin, your two-handed swings have a 4% chance to activate your currently equipped power, which may be a shout or perhaps your berserk power. His weapon may be hefty, but his body is completely unhindered, and he benefits from a complete range of motion. Thank Light Armor for that. From the Light Armor skill tree, go for Light Armor Mastery 2 out of 2. As a leaf, Light Armor Fit, Unhindered, Into the Maelstrom, Keen Senses, Initiative 2 out of 2, Lightning Strike, Fight or Flight, Survival Instinct, Tempting Fate, Wind Runner, War Dancer, Glancing Blows, Evasive Leap, and then wild and free. With Survival Instinct, you'll gain a 10% movement speed increase for 6 seconds when struck by an unblocked attack or hostile spell. And with Tempting Fate, you can gain an additional 20% movement speed increase if you are not blocking during an opponent's power attack windup. If the attack misses, you can keep the boost until the end of combat, or until you are next struck by a power attack. Wind Runner gives you a 10% movement speed boost if wearing all light armor, which we will be, and War Dancer transforms this into an offensive advantage granting you 20% more attack and crit damage, though the effect is lost for 6 seconds if you are hit by an opponent's attack. Glancing Blows allows you to take less damage while War Dancer is active, 30% less if the incoming attack is blocked, and also 30% less if it's unblocked, but then, because you didn't block, the 6 second cooldown will apply. Wild and Free rewards fast movements, as sprinting decreases your susceptibility to damage by 50%. Similarly, with Evasive Leap, you become temporarily invulnerable when jumping for one second with a 5 second cooldown. The son of a blacksmith and an orc who is very familiar with physical labor, the berserker is a natural born armorer. With smithing, the berserker will be able to craft all of his own weapons and armor. Now from the smithing skill tree, grab smithing mastery 2 out of 2, merrick smithing 1 out of 2 picking dwarven, expert smithing 1 out of 2 picking orcish, exotic smithing 1 out of 2 picking crystalline, planar smithing 1 out of 2 picking dragon bone, advanced workshop smithing specialization picking two handed, iron law recycle materials, sandstone sheath, fuel the inferno, and heart of creation. Last but not least, we've got speech. And while this gruff barbarian isn't prone to long conversations, he knows how to get what he wants, and he can be rather persuasive. From the speech tree, take speech mastery 1 out of 2, and the universe listens, windborn, hurricane force, force redoubled 2 out of 2, Thorm of War, Merciless Storm, and Dovar Zulan. This tree is more than just persuasion and bartering thanks to Ordinator, and with perks like Windborn, your shouts are reinforced with new abilities. Windborn causes your shouts to summon a divine wind, granting 30% extra attack damage and 15% increased movement speed for 15 seconds stacking. Thorm of War allows your shouts to stagger foes within 25 feet, reducing their armor rating by 300 points for 10 seconds, and knocking enemies with less than 25% health down. The Merciless Storm Dover Zulan combo can be devastating when used effectively too. The first lets you cancel an active shout cooldown, and the second gives your next shout the ability to carry your previous shout. This means you can combine two shouts and unleash them simultaneously. With all that in mind, we can get a good idea of the Berserker's playstyle, and if you had to sum it up in one word, Berserker would be pretty fitting. He relies on speed and power, moving quicker than his enemies and striking much harder. He is evasive, but will be rewarded when his health is low with even more strength, so you can fight with reckless abandon even when you're vastly outnumbered. So don't stress if you find yourself taking damage early in a fight. Your power attacks will constantly stagger enemies and we're going to be doing them all the time and they'll be doing loads of damage and with shouts like Elemental Fury and plenty of perk choices, you'll be attacking so fast that your enemies won't be able to recover from their staggering. Now remember we've got other powers to use as well and if you use Secret of Strength, we'll be able to power attack without losing stamina from it for 30 seconds, meaning that 
Sprite will hardly ever run out of power attacks or stamina, but then, even if we do run out of stamina, we can still power attack thanks to the Lord Stone. Your shout cooldowns will often be shortened, so you can switch to offensive shouts quickly, creating an onslaught of physical and thumb damage. And don't forget your signature power, Berserk, which improves your damage for a short time. This racial power perfectly sums up the Berserker's playstyle and his approach to combat scenarios. As for gear, the Berserker will dress practically, opting for the Barbarian armor, boots, and gauntlets, all of which he can smith himself and improve drastically. You can also find it on bandits that you kill, and it's pretty simple stuff. You don't need the most protective armor in Tamriel, even when you're rich from your adventures. You'll then want to wear an amulet of Talos to reduce your shout cooldown times. In terms of weaponry, your main choice will be the Dragonbone Battle Axe, crafted yourself and smithed up to its maximum potential. You can also use Volendrung as a backup, which fits your heritage and your respect for Malakath, but this weapon will definitely take the back seat and will only be used on special occasions. And there you have it, subscribe to Fudge Muppet if you're new to the channel and want more, and give the video a like if you think it deserves it and you enjoyed this video. Don't forget the timestamps are in the description just below, along with a full list of the mods we've used for this build, and links to our social media accounts if you want to keep up with everything Fudge. Thanks so much for watching guys, my name is Michael, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.